Welcome back to the porch of the Grand Hotel on Mackinac Island as we continue our coverage of this year's policy conference. A chance to sit down now with Robert Shaner, who is the superintendent of Rochester Community Schools. Thanks for the time. Well, thanks I, for having me. I, 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 I'm always curious to talk to um, the suburban school districts about what I think um, has happened over the years is we've kind of looped Detroit schools in one place and then the suburban schools as if there's something else. And I, I wonder how often you, you, you come up against that and struggle with, uh, because you're all trying to educate kids. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's something I, I, I really reflect on a lot because um, I believe we really deliver world-class education in Rochester and I think every child in Michigan deserves that. And as I, I listened to Dr. Vetti this morning, I, uh, I really thought about how do we, we make sure that every child in Michigan is, is getting that world-class education and, and furthermore, how do we collaborate to make sure that that happens. Yeah, in fact, it's interesting. one thing that, that has changed in the 20-some years now that I've been in Michigan, when I got here, um, Michigan was one of the best education states in the country. We, Detroit gets a lot of attention, but as a state, we have really fallen behind and I love asking people like you to describe what it is you think that happened to us. Where did we fall apart? Well, I, I, I don't know that we have fallen apart. I think it depends on um, by which measure. Of course, uh, marginalized children uh, need more attention and marginalized children uh, really, really need uh, a full wraparound uh, area of support. Um, but I do think that what we need to do moving forward, because I hate to point fingers and say this is what happened, this is what, what whose fault it was, it really doesn't matter at this point. What uh, what really matters is how we move forward, and I, I so appreciate that the governor is taking that proactive approach to it, making sure that we're, we're using that weighted formula to, uh, to reach those marginalized children. Is our problem uh, going on, do you think, is our larger problem with the way that we administrate and the way that we fund, or is it something that's going on in the classrooms? Um, I don't think it's anything going on in the classrooms. I'm very proud of my teachers and how hard they work every day, and I mm -hmm. think across the state of Michigan. Uh, I do think that we need to stop talking about the profession of teaching like it's, uh, like it's something nobody wants to do. I, uh, I actually came back into teaching from police work, and, um, it, and it's one of the best jobs I ever had. I love what I do now. I love with the, the people that I work with, but I loved being in a classroom, and I miss it every day. Yeah. And uh, I actually say, said this to my staff last opening day before we started the school year what you do in the classroom is as important or more important than, than practicing medicine. And that came from my 15-year-old daughter, actually, that told me that who wants to be a doctor. Oh, well, I said, yeah. uh, I, I said to I, she said, what are you going to say to your staff on opening day, Dad? And I said, well, I'm going to say that their job's almost as important as practicing medicine. And she said, you know what, Dad, I think it's more important. Yeah. It's daily medicine in, it's, in, its, in its yeah. own way. I think, I, I think teachers need to be more supported, but I think we also need to celebrate what they do each and every day and what all of us uh, does for children. Yeah. It's, it's critically important work. I wouldn't be where I'm at. Without, uh, without mentors and without people pulling me along. I think it's only natural for many of us who grew up in a school system to think about the way it was, mm -hmm. and yet we also are trying to tool our kids uh, for a new way of doing things. It's far more digital, it's far more screen-centric, mm -hmm. uh, you name it. Um, Absolutely. It, 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 our, our, how are we doing, do you feel, at keeping up with the demands of what uh, is going to be uh, uh, the reality 10 to 20 years from now? I think we have professionals that are a lot more focused on it than people think they are, um, but it's it's complicated. It's, it's complicated uh, with kids that uh, that are that are experiencing challenges, whether it's social emotional, whether it's socioeconomic, it's it's challenging in terms of keeping up with the curriculum and the technology. I think we're doing a really good job of teaching kids problem solving and, and thinking about what the future looks like. Um, and I think we're also making sure that we're, we're focused on, on the basic things that are, that are critical to an education, which is literacy. I don't think we got it wrong in terms of, of making literacy a moral imperative in the state of Michigan. I do think we got it wrong when we start talking about retaining kids. It's, yeah, the the yeah. research doesn't support retention. Well, like, you know, somebody like me, I, I still love the power of, say, a handwritten letter. And uh, am, I, I, am I just a dinosaur and I need to get over that? Or should we still be trying to teach our kids penmanship, for well, example? I, I mean, it's, yeah, just, I guess a, that it's makes, just one example. <laughs> I guess that makes two dinosaurs, because when I leave here today, I'll, I'll go sit down and, and make handwritten letters to the people that, uh, that I've been able to connect with. So I, I think that's a, that's a local decision, though. And I think one of the things that we, we've got to be careful of getting away from in Michigan is uh, the power of the local school board and as yeah. a local unit of government, governments and, uh, and, a local, and, and keeping that local control so people can yeah. make the decisions they want for their children. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about was um, 
mental health when it comes to young people. We've got suicide rates that have gotten very troubling. Um, we're watching uh, kids struggle in, in, in different kinds of ways. Maybe it's just because we've shed more light on it. And it's always been tough to be a kid, a teenager, yeah. no doubt about that. Um, but what do you suppose is, is going on with young people right now? I think there's a lot of things coming at them. I don't think it's necessarily social media. I don't think it's any one thing. There's a lot of things coming at them. I also think we're more aware of it. There's not anything more difficult than I do that I do than, than help people bury their children, um, and it's and it's happened all too all too too often. Um, and we've we've in Rochester we've really tried to refocus ourselves on our social emotional health of our kids, and I think we've done a good job at it. But it's like so much in Michigan, it, it requires a system. What we talked about this morning, when we talked about pre-K and starting it in a pocket, which is great to grow it. But we need, we need really to attack it as a system and make sure that every child has the supports they need. Whether it's in Detroit, whether it's in Rochester, whether it's in Ishpeming, every child deserves a world-class education and those world-class supports. So we don't, we don't have tragedies like suicides or, or, the, or the crippling addiction that, uh, that some of our kids are experiencing. How does it feel to you when it comes to addiction problems compared to 10 years ago? I think it's worse. I think it's much worse, and again, it might be just because of where I'm sitting. Ten years ago, um, you know, I was a high school principal and, and probably had a little bit more of a microcosmic view of things. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's worse, and I think it's it's worse because of the proliferation of fentanyl, the prolif proliferation of opioids. Yeah, they really do. Uh, are you? Would you call yourself optimistic or pessimistic at the moment about? those issues? I'm optimistic and I'll tell you why. I, I, I have the experience every day to work with, with people that, I, I say this all the time, I must have probably said it 50 times at this conference, I'm blessed to work with the people that I do. They're dedicated to children, they love them very much. I don't think we say that to kids enough. I don't yeah. think we, you know, yeah. one of the things I just said at Honors Convocation last week is I, I want you to know how much you're loved. When you leave this room, you leave this school district, we want you to know how much you're loved. So I am optimistic. Um, I, there's nothing to be pessimistic about when you're dealing with people's children. They're, they're awesome, and that's why we, we I do what we I do. don't think we want pessimists in charge. No, right? hey, education is the work of hope and inspiration, yeah. and if, we, yeah. if it's not joyful work, we probably shouldn't be doing it. We probably should find something else to do. Robert Schenner from uh, Rochester Community Schools, thanks for the Thank conversation. You. Thank you. Pleasure. Yeah.